So this is the only Brutus whale that has ever been seen in British Columbian waters with all the collective knowledge through First Nations, DFO. We thought it was a minke whale, a species we study, but then the diagnostic white bands that we call minke mittens were not on the flippers of this whale. It's very rare. It really, it hasn't been spotted in, in Pacific waters, the West Coast, ever. Um, there was an animal spotted in Puget Sound and in 2010 that died, but very rare to have a bride's whale this far north. So it's probably the first one that's been recognized as a bride's whale in British Columbia. They do typically reside in tropical and subtropical areas, but periodically there are vagrants that come up into Washington State and they have had reported strandings just even within the last decade. Brutus whales can get to be about 16.5 meters. This one isn't even half of that. So the size was already indicative to us. It was part of the confusion because this is about the size of a, a, a small minke whale. Again, the species we study. But this is, this is a young male whale that is nowhere near full size. It's only about seven meters. This is led by Department of Fisheries and Oceans and they make every effort to have people respond and there's a wonderful network along the coast here and it's really a, a great collaboration in terms of working with biologists and research scientists to better understand the natural history of these animals. We're also very interested in look, doing forensic investigations. Yeah, gross diagnostically, initially there's nothing that really stands out. Uh, there is some swelling. But uh, yeah, nothing, nothing significant at this point that we can look to cause a death. But again, Dr. Raverty's taken uh, lots of samples. This animal was probably not in the best body condition. It was in suboptimal body condition. The blubber was quite thin and the bottom half of the blubber was actually reddened. It was a, a degree of increased blood perfusion because it was probably mobilizing fat from the blubber in order to sustain its uh, normal function. But there's nothing to indicate vessel strike like immediately. But there's all kinds of possibilities, like for example, with warming waters, uh, there can be a buildup of even a naturally occurring toxin that people are aware of as like shellfish paralytic uh, poisoning, red tide. We're looking at harmful algal blooms, HABs as well, domoic acid, all these things that can impact whales. So those samples will all be tested. There was a little bit of food within the intestinal tract, but not a lot. We have archived or we're saving back samples that will undertake some bacterial culture, screen them for different types of viruses and parasites. Everything is being used here. Blubber samples, the fecal samples, the intestines, learning about what the whale has eaten, and then all kinds of sampling for toxin loads from the blubber, but even from the fluid in the eye of the whale. We're getting some good science here from in terms of the samples, so we'll be running all sorts of tests and hopefully uh, get some more information on, on why this animal died. So we were in contact with the head of the Stranding Response Program at NOAA in Washington, D.C., and they had requests for specific tissues. And similarly, DFO science researchers have requests for samples, so we've collected material for them as well. We just want to ensure that we get as many samples as we can to distribute and then we also retain a set of tissues for legacy samples. So if 30, 40, 50 years down the line somebody wants to do a retrospective study looking at contaminants or heavy metals or these al harmful algal toxins, we'll be able to actually have that, that material available. It's a huge thing, yeah, and, and hopefully in terms of education, like what's happening behind us right now, is it's such a rarity to be able to learn from a whale in any case because they so often sink to the bottom of the ocean and disappear with their stories. But this is a case to find out what's normal as well as what might be the cause of death for this young male Brutus whale. These samples go all over the world that are tested for, uh, there's many academic studies going on for various, whether it's contaminants, uh, we're looking at baleen, trophic food, um, different organs. We're looking at the ectoparasites that we found on this animal. So they will be part of many, many, many uh, studies that are going on that we're collaborating with and uh, getting as much science as we can from the animal. So that's, uh, you know, a huge 
a huge asset from a, a sad situation. Essentially these animals look like they span globally but in tropical and subtropical climates or regions and the fact that it's up here is somewhat, it's very unusual that we would find it here in British Columbia. It's, it's dizzying and, and certainly a test to like how little we know about the ocean and how much we miss that despite all the whale knowledge in this area, a community that really cares that nobody saw the whale, detected the whale, until somebody happened to be walking their dog, and then it ends up being the rarest of the rare. We got a great team, very experienced. Um, Dr. Avery's a world-class veterinarian, marine mammal pathologist, so just really lucky to have everybody come together, and, and you know, what a team, and, and a lot of locals that have come out to help us, so it's, it's huge, and, and Nam geese have been amazing. And then, uh, which we find very moving as well, the Numgis Nation is gifting this to the Whale Interpretive Centre in their rebuild. Um, and there might be the recollection that the Whale Interpretive Centre burnt down together with a large part of Telegraph Cove at the end of December. So they uh, have agreed to gift this to the Whale Interpretive Centre because I think we've got a pretty good track record of trying to help educate people about the marine mammals in the area and uh, they've always been very supportive of that. So the cascade of how this whale's death may count is going all the way to that its skeleton will be of huge significance to the rebuild of the Whale Interpretive Centre. Uh, with a good a bit of luck I think we could have the, the building by about a year from now and uh, it's a priority. They, uh, nobody wants the Whale Centre back. It's been a, a pretty neat place to, to go and uh, we've got uh, we've got three skeletons ready to go already for this summer. We're going to have a, a hopefully a tent or something on the boardwalk, and with this one uh, before, so uh, there's some pretty positive things happening. Mm -hmm.